Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Report Cruise Update for July 2024. We're going to take a little walk down memory lane and then we're going to talk about a couple of cruises we have coming up very soon. I think you're going to want to hear about it. So it is July. We're now into summer 2024, and it's been a little quiet around here. You probably haven't heard from us in a while, uh, but that's about to change because we've got some cruise projects coming up here in the near future where we're going to be reviewing a couple of new ships, and uh, we're pretty excited about it, and we're going to tell you about it coming up here, but before I get into that, I did want to uh, tell you about a cruise I took. This is back in 1994. I found some documentation. Uh, I was going through some old files. We were throwing out a bunch of stuff, taking them to the company to shred stuff, and I came across this old ticket book from a Majesty of the Seas cruise that I took Actually, I took it by myself. This is right after uh, Ricky and I had met, so we weren't cruising yet. In fact, honestly, she wasn't very enthusiastic about cruising when I first met her because she had been on a cruise uh, a few years before that and didn't have a really good experience. So she wasn't very excited. I had to kind of kind of drag her into cruising. But anyway, uh, just I just thought it was so fascinating to see this old ticket book. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it because I think it's kind of interesting. This not only had my cruise ticket, but also had my airline ticket. I had booked air through Royal Caribbean. This was a Royal Caribbean Majesty of the Seas cruise out of Miami. I was by myself in an ocean view. It was my first time in an ocean view stateroom, and it was an obstructed view. There was a, uh, I believe there was a lifeboat kind of right outside my window. I didn't care. I'd always been an inside cabin, so any kind of view was pretty good to me. And but I, I just think it's amazing to see this old ticket. I was going to try to find the price. I can tell you a little bit about, here we go, the cabin fare for me by myself in that Ocean View Stateroom was $1,753.50. So this is September 18th, the sailing date, 1994. So 30 years ago, prices really haven't gone up that much in 30 years. I mean, you could probably get an Ocean View on a lot of ships now, for probably bigger and nicer than Majesty of the Seas for sure. For seventeen hundred and fifty, it was twenty one hundred and eighty one dollars total with air. Now the airfare was three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Now that would have been round trip from DFW to Miami. So, kind of interesting. The airfare is probably cheaper back then than it is right now. So very interesting. Uh, the ship sailed at five p.m. on September eighteenth, nineteen ninety-four. I was in the main dining room seating. Party of one. I did sit with other people. I remember that. We went to Miami, and then we had a day at sea. Uh, we went to Playa del Carmen, which is nothing like Playa del Carmen is now. I guarantee you. Uh, we went to Cozumel, Georgetown, Grand Cayman. I remember that because I remember getting off the ship and buying uh, Ricky a gift. We had just been dating a few weeks at that time. And I remember getting off in, in Grand Cayman and buying her, I believe it was some sort of a black opal uh, at a jewelry store. And then we went to Ocho Rios. I've got a funny story I'll tell you in the future about what happened on that trip in Ocho Rios. And then we had another day at sea. Coco K, which obviously is nothing like Coco K is now, and then back to Miami. So just kind of, I don't know, just kind of interesting. I also, 
I even have my old room key uh, that I was in the second seating, is what it says here, uh, at the Maytime dining room on deck three. And I was in stateroom 9520. Back then, they printed your stateroom numbers on the key, or at least Royal Caribbean did. Kind of not a great idea in case you lose your key. Somebody could just look at that and go to your stateroom and do whatever they want, I guess. And then there was also a little invitation to, I don't know if you can see that or not, a little invitation to a repeat passenger cocktail party to be held in the Paint Your Wagon Lounge Tuesday afternoon at 5.30. Jacket and tie are in order. Good luck enforcing that nowadays. <laughs> so things have changed. Okay, so let's talk about what's coming up. Next month in August, we will be sailing on the brand new Silver Sea Silver Ray. Very, very excited about seeing this ship. This will be our 146th cruise, and it will be our 18th cruise on Silver Sea. We may have been on more Silver Sea cruises than any other cruise line, so we are uniquely qualified, I think, to uh, assess this new ship. This will be our first time to see this new hardware platform which is shared with sister ship Silver Nova. These are larger ships. They're the newest ships in the fleet. And we're very, very curious what this ship is going to be like because from some of the stuff we've seen online, on YouTube, some other people that have reviewed these ships, we're anxious to see how they handle 728 guests compared to the Silver Moon, Silver Muse class of ship, which I believe hold 596. So we're talking about, what, 130 more people, roughly? And is it going to feel crowded? Are they going to be able to maintain the same level of service that we've come to expect from Silver Sea in the past? I mean, we have very high expectations when we go on Silver Sea. We absolutely love Silver Sea. We've had some great experiences on that cruise line. But there have been a lot of changes at Silver Sea over the last few years. Lots of changes. Our last Silver Sea cruise was aboard Silver Endeavor, which was a expedition ship. We went to Antarctica, had a great time. But that ship was not built by Silver Sea or wasn't designed for Silver Sea. It was an acquisition. They purchased that ship from, I believe, Crystal. Beautiful ship, but this is the first new Silver Sea build that we've been on since Silver Moon. Just to let you know, here is what we're planning to focus on when we go on this Silver Sea ship. Now, we kind of pride ourselves on, and I think most of you have come to expect, that we do very thorough, in-depth reviews. Now, what we'll be doing once we get on board the ship We'll be doing a daily blog where we write about our previous day's experience with pictures, and we'll tell you everything we did, pretty much activities, excursions, uh, things about the ship that we've discovered. But we will be doing a daily blog. We will be posting quite regularly to Instagram. So look for Instagram Reels and Instagram Posts throughout that, uh, I believe it's an 11-day cruise. So you'll, you'll be getting all of that. We're also, we're flying into Venice the day before. We'll be spending the night uh, at a hotel in Venice, and we will blog about that experience as well. For those of you that will be sailing into or out of Venice, maybe you want to know of a nice place to stay, and we'll let you know how we like this hotel that we have booked. So we're, once we get on board the ship, we'll be doing our blogs, we'll be doing Instagram. So if you haven't, if you're not following us yet on Instagram and Facebook, please do, because that's where we'll be posting links to all of our blogs and things like that. You can go to our website, cruisereport.com. You'll be able to see the uh, links to the blog right off the homepage, because we always feature the ship that we're on. And what we're really going to focus on on this ship is 
service levels, are they able to maintain the same service level we've come to expect from Silver Sea, especially with uh, more guests on board than what we've experienced in the past? We also want to check out the spaciousness of the ship. Is it going to feel crowded? One of the things we love about Silver Sea ships, Silver Moon, Silver Endeavor, is you never feel crowded. You all, the space to guest ratio is extremely high. And uh, that's one of the things we love about Silver Sea, and we're hoping uh, that they somehow are able to maintain that. We will, of course, talk about our accommodations. Uh, every sh every uh, stateroom on board Silver Sea is a suite. They call all of their rooms suites. And they're all large, and they all have butlers. They're one of the few, maybe the only luxury line left that offers butler service in every suite category. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I don't know. Maybe Crystal does too. I'm not sure, but Silver Sea has butler service in every category. So that's unique, and we're going to talk about the butler service. We'll be checking that out too. And of course, we'll be writing and a video about our dining experience, food and dining. Are they able to maintain what we've expected in the past from Silver Sea? So and in, I put last entertainment and activities because we don't really think of Silver Sea as a big entertainment cruise line. We go to the shows, we check them out. But it is a smaller ship. It's, we don't expect them to have the kind of entertainment that you would expect on what will be our next cruise in September, a much larger ship with a more of a production cast. But we'll still, we still want to see if the entertainment on board uh, this new Silver Ray is, is comparable to what we've experienced, maybe even better than what we've experienced in the past. So... Our real question is, is this still going to be an ultra-luxury experience like Silver Sea has always delivered in the past? So if you're a luxury cruiser, if you are a cruiser interested in you know, all-inclusive luxury ships like Silver Sea offers, I think you're going to want to follow our blog, follow our Instagram, and watch for our reviews because we will put out three different videos, at least three, at least three, when we get back. And that will be on the food and dining, on the ship itself, and on our accommodations. And when I say the ship, I mean the ship, the crew, the, ex the overall Silver Sea experience on Silver Ray. Let's move on to September. In September, we will be on the brand new Sun Princess, this will be our 147th cruise. This will be our sixth cruise with Princess. Seems like we've been on more Princess cruises, but it's our sixth Princess cruise. And of course, this is their brand new, what they call their Sphere class vessel. Completely new platform, much larger, holds more people. It's kind of a new... Uh, direction, I guess you could say, that Princess is taking. Princess, over the last few years, has kind of been going a little more a little more family-focused than what they were in the past. What we remember is it being more of an adult cruise line. And, and you know, our whole channel is kind of geared toward adult couples traveling together, not, not with a family, no kids. We were going to be thinking about that as we experience this new Princess. How is that fit now for adult couples that like to go on cruises? Is it still going to accommodate that key demographic that Princess kind of built a reputation on? Princess Holland America, even some to some degree and a lot of degrees celebrity, were kind of aimed and focused, and Viking of course, uh, at that adult couples. Not, not so much the kids, but Holland America and Princess have kind of been changing their direction in the last few years to kind of make it more appealing to families. There's going to be a lot of kids' areas on board this ship. And how's it going to They got 4,300, I think, people on this ship of 4,300 passengers and I believe 1,500 crew, which is not a really high crew-to-guest ratio. 
So what are the service levels going to be like on this new ship? And this ship has, we watch a lot of YouTube videos and we've watched a lot of the people that have been on this ship already. And we've seen a lot of challenges. I mean, apparently they're like, I don't know if they just didn't think some things through before they got the ship released or what, but they there was a lot of delay in getting some of the dining venues open. There was a delay in their entertainment for the first few cruises. A lot of the people that took the first few cruises, I'm glad we waited until September to book our cruise because I think everything's going to be up and running. And even after our cruise, they're, they're implementing some changes with this new sanctuary class. Because as it started out, they had like a reserve collection and, the, and a signature collection. And I don't know, it's very, very confusing because Princess has made a lot of changes. Obviously, they're listening to their guests and maybe they're responding by making these changes. But it does not appear that, that they really thought some of these things through. I think even by the time we get on board, there's going to have been some changes in the dining venues. They've moved venues from one location to another. So we're a little confused, but here's the things that we're going to be focusing on. We are staying, first of all, we're staying in a cabana mini suite. That's what we have booked right now, a cabana mini suite. We did get the offer from Princess a few days ago to bid for an upgrade. And we considered it. We looked at the different options. And honestly, the fact that when you, if you do win an upgrade from Princess, you don't get to pick your cabin. You pretty much take whatever they give you. We like the location of the Cabana Mini Suite we have right now. We're on that little, uh, dome, not dome, but that little bubble, that, the sphere. I guess you call it the sphere that kind of sticks out from the side of the ship. We're in one of those cabana mini suites right now, and we didn't want to give that up on the idea that we might have gotten put into even a, a nicer category of suite, but it might not have been as good a location. Maybe it'd be under a entertainment venue or noisier or whatever. So we're pretty happy with the suite that we've booked right now. Now, this will be a transatlantic cruise. We'll be on the ship for more than two weeks. And we're going to be spending a couple of nights in London before we get on board the ship. We did book our transfer from Victoria Station down to Southampton with Princess. We booked that online. So that's taken care of. And our hotel is fairly close to the Victoria Coach Station. So it should be a pretty easy process getting to the ship. We felt like it was important to book that through Princess because if we hire an Uber and there's traffic issues or anything and you get late to the ship and you might miss the ship. Something you don't really want to do on a transatlantic cruise. We've almost had that happen to us before, so we're not taking any chances. We booked it through Princess. It's their transfer. If their transfer's late getting to the ship, they're going to hold the ship and wait for us, I hope. Okay. So what we're going to be focusing on is how are, what are the service levels like with that many passengers and 1,500 crew? And of course, we'll try to find out exactly how many passengers, how many crew are on that sailing. Uh, again, the spaciousness, is it going to feel crowded? Princess ships in the past have always been pretty good about not feeling crowded for large ships. And we've been on Discovery Princess, we've been on Island Princess, we've been on Re Royal Princess. And uh, we've never really thought the ships felt overly crowded. Now, if you go to the buffet at peak periods, yeah, it's going to be a little crowded. But of course, our main thing is, how is this for adult couples not traveling with kids? Are there going to be tons of kids on a transatlantic cruise? I don't know. But we're going to have plenty of time with more than two weeks to uh, experience hopefully every venue on board. Now we have pre-booked some of the alternate dining, some of the specialty dining on board. Honestly, I'm going to be looking at this with a pretty critical eye because their specialty dining is expensive. 
we're talking 45 to 49 dollars per person i think it's 45 dollars per person for most of them and we have a couple of them they're like 79 dollars per person and i think they've got got some that go up from there now when ricky and i go out and eat here in the dallas fort worth area we very rarely spend 90 dollars for two people to go have we can have a very very nice meal for 50 or 60 dollars so they're going to have to really wow me more so and i don't mean this in a critical way to princess but it's going to have to be better than what we've had in the past with princess and and we've had some good dining experiences on princess don't get me wrong but it's never been 45 dollars per person so maybe i'm cheap i've been accused of that in the past so you let me know what you think down in the comments 45 dollars per person for a specialty dining restaurant i think they have to really bring it and so okay We'll be checking out the food and dining. I don't know that we'll get a chance to do every venue during the 16 nights, but we've already pre-booked a lot of them. I know we've pre-booked the Tepanaki. Te I'm talking like Don now. He calls it Tapanaki. The Tepanaki restaurant. We have booked the Steakhouse, I believe Crown Grill. We have booked the other Steakhouse, which I can't remember the name right now off the top of my head. We've booked the Love by Brita, Brito, Brito, not Brita. That's a water purifier. Brito, <laughs> Love by Brito, whoever that is. And we have also booked the uh, Spellbound, I believe is the name, the magic show with the dinner. So we will be reviewing all of those. We'll tell you exactly what we think of them. Are they worth the money? Well, you're going to find out when we get back in September. And, of course, we'll be blogging about our experiences just like we do on Silver Sea. Every cruise, we do daily blogs, lots of photos, lots of reels from the ship. So you'll want to make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And that's what we have planned right now. We're still in the process of trying to get something going for the month of December for maybe around Christmas time. Nothing's come up yet. We're still working with a couple of cruise lines and maybe something else even in between there. So that's basically our news for right now. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. And I will see you on the next cruise update in August probably do one from the silver ray we'll probably do we won't do a live show their internet would have to be really good for me to do a live show but we may do uh, like a, a recorded update cruise update right from the ship so be watching for that and uh, if you have any questions like i say put them in the in the comment section down below thanks for joining me if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up that really does help our YouTube channel. And we love to hear from you. We read every comment you post. So thanks for joining me. And until I see you next month, smooth sailing. <music>